Hello everybody, welcome back to TM3 Life. Today, we're gonna discuss the 10 things that I still love about my Model 3 after a year of ownership. Number one, this car is jam-packed with technology. I mean, heck, it's just a computer on wheels, right? I mean, there's all it is is technology. You have the app, which gives you so much functionality into what you can do with the car. Hail the car from the back of a parking lot to come pick me up at the front of the store if it's raining outside. Okay, and let's begin. I can, of course, preheat my car. I can access things. I can start it. I can open my garage door. I can do most things that I can do inside the car just using the app. And inside the car, it's got so much configurability inside. It's amazing. fast, slow, you can adjust the steering, you can do a lot of the things that you can do in most cars, but here it's just all been computerized and there's nothing really that's left that's really analog. Um, it, it really is truly, you know, a computer on wheels or, or like an iPad Pro essentially stuck to your dashboard and, and that's pretty much it. And if you're a tech geek like me, you'll love it. Number two, the simplicity. The simplistic interior. Now this is one of those things you love or you hate, right? I happen to be one of the people that love it. I love how clean it is. I'm kind of like a neat freak, so I really like things uncluttered, clean, neat, 
purposeful but not overdone and to me the model 3 interior is absolutely gorgeous this is my pure white interior after a year of ownership and over 17,000 miles it's still as pure white as the day I purchased it doesn't require anything special wipe down with some baby wipes maybe once a week and that's about it Gotta love the full glass roof. It makes me feel so comfortable and relaxed sitting in such a clean, simplistic interior. So that's my number two. Number three, range. That's a big one, folks, right? I mean, everything comes down to range on a BEV, battery electric vehicle, right? If you're gonna make the switch from an internal combustion engine vehicle to a battery electric vehicle, then you've gotta have the range to be able to make that switch without making a sacrifice. And that was key on the Model 3. I didn't have to sacrifice where I drive and how I drive. I didn't want to have to drive around in the car wearing a blanket over my lap in the winter time. I didn't want to have to worry about if I have enough range to get to where I'm going. And one of the huge pluses is of course the supercharger network. So as long as you're driving pretty much anywhere in the US, you are good to go. And I can take that from me because I have been around the US in the Model 3 and you all know that by now. Number four, charging. Home charging and long distance charging, right? Well, we all know what we're gonna do long distance, right? We're gonna go to our Tesla superchargers. I believe it's 98% of the populace is within 150 miles of a supercharger. So you are good to go pretty much anywhere you want in the United States. I think the only parts that they're missing right now is right around North Dakota. And I believe those are being filled in. I think they're due to be filled in by the end of this year. So after that's done, it pretty much sky's the limit. Home charging. Love the home charging, especially with the Tesla wall connector, which there's a video above, I'll link it here, of installing your own Tesla wall connector. And with that, you have, you have a wand, just like you do at a supercharger, where you can open the charge port door right from the wand, and plug it in, it's charging. You have the ability to daisy chain other chargers off in it. You can charge you know, up to the Model 3's max charging capacity by, by attaching the uh, Tesla wall connector to a 60 amp breaker, and you can put a full 40 amps of charge into it, AC to DC which is gonna give you about 44, 45 miles per hour of charge at home. Do I worry about that? Not at all. What's great about charging at home? Every morning, I leave my garage with a full tank of electrons, folks. I don't need to worry about stopping at a gas station, getting that you know, scheduled into my day, because if you leave your garage in the morning and you have a quarter tank of gas and you drive to work, well, guess what? On your way home, you might as well stop and get groceries or pick up some milk at the local convenience store because you're stopping to get gas. I don't gotta do that. And I can't tell you how much of a change or, or paradigm shift that really is for me because now I drive past gas stations and I see all these people sitting outside waiting for their car to fill up. 
And yeah, it may only take five minutes to fill up a car with gas or diesel, but I don't want to stand out in the freezing cold and get all make my hands all smelly like gasoline. I, I never realized how much that bothered me until I don't have to do it anymore. Every day I wake up and I'm ready to go with the same full tank of electrons I had the previous day. It's phenomenal, and until you get a chance to experience it, it's kind of hard to really grasp the idea, but trust me, it is awesome. Number five. Storage. Oh my gosh, this car is full of storage. And the storage underneath here doesn't even exist in a Model S, but if we open this up, looks like just a small little tray here, all nice and felt lined. Pull this out set this up here and it goes way down deep let me stick my hand in here so you can get an idea how far it goes in there and then it comes up here so there's all that storage which again doesn't even exist in the Model S or the Model X I do believe and then we have this opens up and like oh wow look at that little tray this tray is kind of cool it's got my J1772 adapter in case I'm in a level 2 charger somewhere that isn't a supercharger, I have that. But that's not all. I'll pop this open. This is where you can put two phones in here. This is kind of, my phone's kind of big because I have it, plus I have it in a case. But then if you move the phone out of the way, this lifts up and we can pull this little tray right out of the way. I've got some microfiber towels down here, but if I move those, let's take a look at how deep that storage is. That is phenomenal storage. And of course we also have our glove box storage. Glove box is not really big, kind of standard for the industry, but at least it's got one and it's hidden. There's no handles on the outside of the glove box, so it doesn't even look like it has one. And that's just interior storage. Let's take a look at the frunk, trunk, and sub trunk. Let's open them first. Okay, here's the frunk. Plenty big enough to store a carry-on suitcase for an airplane. Perfectly sized for that. I use it a lot for groceries. I use it a lot for takeout. It's got hooks built right in. That's great for if you were just stopping to get some groceries. You just wrap the handles of the bags around here. It keeps them from spilling. Now we're in the trunk. I'm not sure if you can see, but it's really deep. Very deep trunk, 60-40 split rear seat. Plenty of width in here. There's a storage pocket over here. Over here there's not a storage pocket because the 15th speaker, the subwoofer, is in here. And that's not all, we have a sub trunk. Now I have mine pretty full. This is 18 inches deep. It's about the size of yeah, a gas tank, <laughs> but deeper. But since this car doesn't require a gas tank, you get all the storage. The storage in this car is excellent. Number six. Yeah, security. It's a big deal and a huge difference with the Model 3. Not only do we have our own phones that we carry with us that just allow us to get in and out of our cars and drive it without ever taking out a key or pushing a button to start or stop the vehicle, we also have this ability to select a PIN number, a PIN to drive. to steal your phone and jump in your car, guess what? They're not going anywhere unless they can figure out your four digit pin. So the likelihood of that is pretty slim. And on top of that, something that I don't understand, but 
that I don't understand why every auto manufacturer isn't doing this, but Tesla is. They are utilizing the cameras around the car. This car has 360 degrees of recorded, or, or recording capability when you're not anywhere near your car. And even when you are, it's recording through those same four cameras with your dash cam. You are covered all the time. If someone hits you and you get into an accident, you've got footage of what just happened. If you are gone away from your car and you set sentry mode, which is the security system's ability to monitor the car while you're not near it, I have you have footage of anything that happens near or to your car. It is absolutely phenomenal. I love watching my Century footage. A lot of times it's just people looking in and taking a look at the car, which I think is great. Sometimes people actually know that they're being recorded because on the screen it tells you that you're being recorded and they'll say hello, they'll wave or they'll make a funny face or do a little dance. Eh, it's pretty funny, but overall it is awesome. And if anything ever happens to your car, you have proof of what happened to your car. And over and over again, thieves and vandals are being caught because of sentry mode. It is a phenomenal security feature. And I think every automobile manufacturer should be offering these types of things to their customers. Yeah. Number seven. Oh my gosh. The seats in the Model 3 front seats, I, I guess even the back seats, but for me, you know, I only, I only pretty much sit in the front. They are so comfortable. It's like kicking back in your lazy boy. Oh my gosh, it is just phenomenal. I have put 12 hours straight on the road in my Model 3 sitting in my seats and have not been uncomfortable at all. It is amazing. And the space in the car, you just feel like you have so much space, not only because of the simplistic interior, but because of the glass roof. It just gives you that open air kind of feeling, even though technically the roof doesn't open, but with being full glass, it just feels so much open to the outside. It is just absolutely wonderful. Electric vehicles in general are so smooth. They take off really smooth. They slow really smooth. They don't shift. There's no jerky motions. Um, there's nothing. Even with the automatic, you may think it's smooth, but when you get a fully electric vehicle, it is truly smooth quiet and just wonderful. The comfort in these cars and pretty much a lot of battery electric vehicles is, is great. But in the Tesla Model 3 and most Teslas in general, it is unparalleled. Comfort is awesome. Number eight. Ooh, infotainment is amazing. I can watch Netflix, Hulu, YouTube. How does that feel, baby? Um, lower. How does that feel, baby? I can swap over to the game console, essentially, and I can play video games, but essentially pulling out an Xbox controller in my car and playing video games.
you think to yourself, when would you ever do that? But you know what? I bring my daughter down to the bottom of the driveway every morning and we wait for the bus to come and while we wait for the bus to come, we play video games and she enjoys it and it is just fun. It's a great way to pass the time. The music in this system is mind blowing. It is absolutely just poof, blow your mind. It is you can crank it all the way up. There is no distortion. The bass is phenomenal. The sound clarity is incredible. And that's whether you're watching a movie or listening to music. And what I love about the music is I have Slacker Radio. Most people I think don't like Slacker Radio. I like it, it's fine for me. I'm able to push the talk button and say, hey, play whatever. And it finds whatever and it plays it for me and it's incredible to find some pretty obscure stuff and I haven't had any problems with it at all. The quality is great. The sound is amazing. So infotainment, bar none. One of my most favorite things of the car. Number nine. Yup. Autopilot. Used it 97% of my trip driving around the United States on the highways. I use it here at home driving on secondary roads. You gotta pay closer attention, obviously, because right now it doesn't see or acknowledge stop signs. It sees them, but it doesn't acknowledge stop signs or stop lights, so you gotta pay attention to those types of things. But other than that, this car drives me right down the road if I don't feel like actually driving. It allows you to have a hand free to do something else without worrying about whether or not you're gonna veer off into the oncoming lane or off the shoulder or, or what have you, and the autopilot works just for the most part flawlessly. It's like having a, I mean, it's not like having a really experienced driver behind the wheel, but it's gotten so much better. I remember when I first had it, it was like having a 13 year old drive your car. Eh, that's a little iffy, right? But now it's like having a 16, 17 year old drive the car. It's getting so much better and it gets better with every update. And the more and more miles that people put on autopilot, it learns, it's an AI and it's learning and it's getting better and better and it's phenomenal. Um, the adaptive cruise control is great. Um, the ability to pass slower moving traffic on the highways all by itself is phenomenal. Um, there are so many different facets of autopilot. I can make a whole separate video on it, but I will just tell you, love it. And once you get used to it, you will love it too. So just embrace the future and autopilot is, is, is the future. So last but not least, and these are in no particular order, okay? But number 10, performance is huge. I've had a lot of really nice, really fast cars, and I wanted something that was going to be able to at least meet those needs or expectations. And the speed is crazy. I don't care if you're at a dead stop. Here we go. going 40, 40 miles an hour. Oh. Whew. That could be a good ab workout. Maybe I have something there. The new and improved Tesla abs. I don't know. We'll circle back to that. Or you're going 70 miles per hour. When 70 miles an hour. <laughs> Woo! That gets, uh, I can get you arrested pretty quick. When you smash that accelerator, boom! Pushes you back in your seat and you're off again like you just took off from a stop. It is crazy. I mean, it, it warps your organs inside of your body. It is phenomenal. And this car has gotten two performance upgrades since I purchased it. Each one a 5% increase in power. So we're talking probably a little over 10% of an increase in power since the day I purchased this vehicle. This car is now extremely fast. From zero to 60, there's very little out there that's gonna beat this car. Does your car go faster since you bought it a year later? I doubt it, unless you've done some Unless you paid for some some of your own personal bolt-on upgrades or what or, or what have you, or added a different turbo or supercharger or something like that, your car didn't get faster by an over-the-air update. That I can guarantee you. Mine did, and it's phenomenal. 
and it, it blows a lot of people's mind, the speed of this car. And it's not necessarily the speed as like top end speed, but the top end I believe is 145 miles per hour, but I don't really ever do that, nor <laughs> I have the need to do that. It's zero to 60 that you're really concerned about, right? And, or that most people really care about. And from zero to 60, there are very few cars that are gonna really beat me. Um, not that I'm out there street racing, but boy, I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm ever underpowered. Performance is amazing. The steering is incredible. When you put that in sport mode, it's so heavy and it is so direct. As soon as you put any steering input into this car, it is immediate and the body roll is very minimal because of that thousand pound battery pack that sits below the seats between the tires. The weight distribution is great and the cornering is incredible. And of course, with any electric motor, the torque is instantaneous all the time. So those are the 10 things that I still love about my Model 3 after a year of ownership. And I imagine these will still be the same 10 things I will love about this car six years from now. But you know what? The list is probably gonna grow because my car keeps getting better all the time and new features are added monthly. So thanks for sticking with me through all 10 of my things that I still love about my Tesla. And now it's time for some Snapple facts. Once again, welcome back to Snapple Facts. Let's grab two caps at random. Snapple fact number one. It is possible to lead a cow upstairs, but not downstairs. Hmm, I'm trying to think. I actually worked on a dairy farm for quite a few years when I grew up as a kid in the summertime. Yeah, I do not remember, I'm just trying to remember leading them around to the milking corral. Yeah, there was never, there was never any stairs. Just ramps. That is interesting knowledge. You do learn something new every day. Snapple fact number two. Long Island is the largest island in the continental U.S. Oh, huh, that's pretty cool. Sample fact number two. Thanks for joining us again. We'll see you next time. Welcome back from Snapple Facts. And I just wanted to say, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go down to the bottom there, hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. It helps get the video shared around and other people can see it and compare notes. And if you have other things that you love about your Model 3 or things that you think I should have had on my list, make a comment down below and put what you like best about your Model 3 or your Tesla in general. I'd love to hear what you think is best about it. Until next time. Let's keep those batteries charged.